people who knew very little about the civil rights movement or would never go south themselves could certainly come to Washington to express their indignation over what was going on. Uh, we were very isolated. We were getting increasingly isolated by the local authorities because they were arresting us. I had spent some time earlier that summer in Albany, Georgia, another real hot spot. And every time we stepped outside the Freedom House, which is what we call the, the places we, the SNCC, SNCC uh, residences, police would arrest us. So finally, we took refuge in a church and stayed there almost a week. And we said we we're going to take um, refuge in this sanctuary in this church until the police agreed to stop arresting us. That's the way things were. And they were breaking the back of the civil rights movement by um, arresting. And then you got to put up bond to get people out. So it was very, very costly, very expensive. Bond money was running out. Uh, the NAACP usually got people, their people out of jail. But, you know, we had northern supporters, but how much bond money can you raise? It was a you know, big, real big issue. And the police were aware of it. And, you know, that money that local sheriffs were, were charging for bond often went into their very own pockets, so they had an incentive to keep uh, arresting people and to raise the bond. You know, it was awful. I cannot express that much how we were becoming increasingly marginalized and isolated. The, a march would not change things in the South at all, but it would give greater visibility to what was going on. And it w a, a march would also allow our broadest span of supporters to come out. And in some way, we hoped that those Southern sheriffs would see that we were not alone, you know. And, you know, increasingly we also hoped that a march would have some pressure on President Kennedy uh, and a civil rights bill. So that was the status of things. Things were, had gotten very, very rough.